If you've been on YouTube at all in the past week, then the chances are you've come across Team Seas, a charity event organized by Mr. Beast and Mark Rober, with one simple goal in mind. Raise $30 million to remove 30 million pounds of trash from the ocean before 2022. My friend, Crafty Masterman, has already done a video promoting Team Seas, and in response, I'm doing the same. If you want to donate, then the place to go is teamseas.org. Please do consider donating, as it's for a very good cause, and trash definitely doesn't belong in our oceans. Now we've covered that, here's a 4x4 piston door. It slides open, it's double-sided, it's completely seamless behind the slime and honey blocks, it's spam-proof, and it opens in the shortest possible time. Now, this might remind you of a couple of sliding 4x4 designs that my friend Crafty posted a while back. And that's not a coincidence. So Crafty, did you make your 4x4 yes. after seeing mine? Yes, because when I saw it, it was so inspirational. And are you recording this right now? Yes. I am being exposed. I saw your 4x4 and I decided it sucks and I'm going to make it cooler. Ooh, I spun it around in my favor. However, there is one key difference between our designs. Crafty's design opens from the top and bottom, not just the left and right. And there's a very simple reason for this, the piston push limit. As you probably know, a piston can only move 12 blocks at a time. Any more than that, and the piston simply won't push. Now, my door opens from the left and right only. When the door is only one-sided, the push limit isn't a problem, but when it's double-sided, we're actually going one block over the push limit, even with honey and slime blocks to help us out. So does that mean I'm cheating? Clearly, my door's pushing 13 blocks instead of 12. It's breaking the rules of the game. Well, actually, no. There is a way. You see, there's this trick that redstone has used to stop slime and honey from sticking to normal blocks. All you have to do is move the normal blocks first, then move the slime and honey while the normal blocks are still in motion. Since we're only one block over the push limit, we only need to move one block each from the top and bottom halves. So we can just put two normal pistons here, and that does work. But now it's out of sync, and it's kind of ugly. We can remove the delay between the pistons, but now it won't retract. But wait, my door is synchronized, and it is pushing 13 blocks. So how? What's the secret that makes it all work? Well, it's a quirk in Java Minecraft called BED. No, not that kind of BED. It stands for Block Event Delay. I'm greatly oversimplifying here, but it's essentially the number of things, block events, that the game has to process in its code before it does a thing in-game. Keep in mind that a piston extension is a block event. Now, to demonstrate bed, we can point two pistons at each other. When we power them at the same time, the one on the right always pushes first in this example. But if we add another piston and use quasi-connectivity, we've added more bed to the right piston. Now, if we power them again, the left side pushes instead. If two pistons are competing for space at the same time, the game gives priority to the piston with the least bed. More pistons means more block events, which means more bed. This is actually the basis of all zero-tick doors. They use bed to control the order of zero-tick pulses that happen at the same time. But that's a whole different topic for another video. Now, going back to the 4x4, if we want to keep it synchronized, then all we need to do is add enough bed to the sticky pistons so the game processes the normal pistons first. Two instant repeaters should do the trick. And it works. It still doesn't retract yet though. We need to add two extra pistons to pull the top and bottom pistons back so they don't count towards the push limit. The rest of the door is actually pretty simple. I use a three game tick delay to retract the double extender as fast as possible. I retract the floor and ceiling when the door closes so the slime and honey doesn't stick. And that's really it. It is smaller and spam proof. I bet yours isn't spam proof. You wanna bet? Oh no! No! Does yours work with observer input? Observer input? Mine can be one tick and it works exactly the same. Well, it will fix Ooh. itself if it gets a one oh, tick. Oh no, but mine works with a one tick. Isn't it button controlled though? No, it's lever. I mean, the observer input isn't really a very good measure. Yes, it is, because then it's... Oh, easier. actually, it does close with an observer input. Oh! 
Rex. No, shut up, shut up, shut up. Now he's, you're definitely including that in the video now. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. No. Yes. <laughs> that is so sad. So to build this door, we're going to need these resources. The top includes the stuff you need to make the inputs that I designed, but if you're going to make the door on its own with your own input, then use the resources at the bottom instead. To start off, we want to come to one side, count in seven blocks, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we start placing sticky pistons. We need to put down eight of them. Now we want to make our input line, and to do that we just put slabs on the sides of all of these pistons, then bring them out one extra on each side, like this, and then put redstone dust on top of all of it. The reason we use slabs is so that this line does not power these pistons. Now we need to put in our instant repeaters, so we come down here, we come to the third block away from that redstone line, and then put a sticky piston facing that way, and then we go one block above and two blocks in, and we put another sticky piston facing the opposite way like that. Then you want to put a redstone block here, and then we want to put a block on the face of this piston, and you see it extends because it's being bud powered by that redstone block. And we just repeat the same on the other side like this. So from here, it's a good idea to build our layout and our door frame just because it will make the door easier to build later on. So take whatever block you want to make the door out of and put it on top of these sticky pistons like this. Then place a support block on the side of this piston. Then place two sticky pistons here, break that block. Then put two more sticky pistons above, another support block here, and then two more sticky pistons like that. And then you want to repeat that on the other side. Then you want to grab your slime and honey and you want to make two by two squares on these pistons like this and make them alternate for each side so that on one side you have honey on top and slime on the bottom and the other side slimes on top and honey's on the bottom. Then you're going to take whatever block you want to use for the door and cover both sides of the slime and honey with it. And to finish off the layout, we want to mirror the pistons at the bottom. So we build three blocks up like this, and then we need to place another line of eight sticky pistons facing down. And then you can break these blocks, and then put whatever block your door is made out of on the faces of these sticky pistons. Next, we want to come around the back, place a note block here, next to where this redstone block would be when it's pushed out, then come underneath, place a sticky piston facing inwards on the side of that piston, then put a redstone block on it, and then support block here, another sticky piston on top, and then a redstone block here. Break that block. And this redstone block is powering this piston, but because of the way this door works, it's not gonna push it out but make sure you don't break any of these blocks because if you update this piston, then it will push. And you want to repeat that on the other side. So again, a note block here, then sticky piston on the side of that one, redstone block, support block, then a sticky piston, and then another redstone block, like that. Next, we need to make a redstone dust line to power these pistons. So first we need to make a line of blocks like this. Go up one here so that this redstone block doesn't power the line when it's pushed forward. And then bring it back down, carry the line along until you get to the middle. And we can save one redstone dust just by putting a block here and bud powering that piston. Then we put redstone dust on all of this, like so. And that half of the pistons will push up and then we just repeat the same thing on the other side. So again, two blocks like this, 
redstone and then go up one block to avoid that redstone block from powering the line when it's pushed forwards and then carry it onto the middle go up one when you reach the middle and then redstone dust on top of everything we can actually test the door now just to see that this bottom part works so you just put a block above this redstone line with a lever on it and if you flick it this should pull down and these redstone blocks should extend and then when we unflick the lever these should retract and those should push back up next we need to come down here and place a sticky piston on the side of this redstone line then put a redstone block on it like that then place a sticky piston facing upwards like this with a slime block on top and a regular block on top of that then we're going to need to remove these two blocks from the wall because otherwise they will get dragged by the slime block and if you're building this underground then it won't be able to push because there'll be too many blocks above it next we want to put two blocks here like this redstone dust on top to power that piston down there and then we put a hopper on top with more redstone there and we need to use a hopper here instead of a regular slab because hoppers are basically immovable slabs and if it weren't a hopper then this slime block would drag it down and break all the redstone dust next we want to put two obsidian blocks on the side of this then redstone dust here then a comparator like this with a furnace behind it make sure to hold crouch when placing it and then put one regular item inside the furnace we do this because this will give it a signal strength of one when this block pushes up so that it doesn't interfere with our half slab tower and we repeat the same thing on the other side so piston here redstone block sticky piston facing up then slime block on top regular block on top of that break these two wall blocks so that this slime block can actually push up then put two blocks here redstone dust like this to power that piston hop it on top redstone then come round to the back here obsidian redstone dust here then a comparator like this hold shift put a furnace down and then one regular item inside like that now we need to make the instant repeaters that make this door possible in the first place so first we put a block here a sticky piston like this with a redstone block on its face then a support block here another sticky piston and another redstone block and then underneath this block we need to place a sticky piston and it will push out and attach to that block then we can break this block here and then put another sticky piston diagonally underneath that redstone block like this and then we repeat it on the other side so block here sticky piston redstone block then a support block and then another sticky piston and redstone block then on the bottom of this block put a sticky piston break that and then another sticky piston like this now we need to carry the power upwards so we put two half slabs like this then a block here then another half slab like this then we go one block up and then we place another block here and three more blocks like that and now we want to put redstone dust on top of all of these blocks then we need to make the part that powers this piston when it's pushed in so first we put a sticky piston here redstone block and then come round here normal piston facing upwards and then another normal piston facing into the door like this and these two pistons are just there to update this piston when it pushes in because it's being bud powered by this redstone block and once again we want to do the same thing on the other side so two half slabs like this then block here another half slab like this then a block here then go diagonally up one and place four blocks along like this then put redstone dust on top of all of them 
Then we put a sticky piston facing downwards here, redstone block there. Then come around the back, put a normal piston facing upwards like this, and another normal piston facing in. Next, we're going to put two support blocks here, then a slab here, break these two, and then put redstone dust on top. Then this is going to power a sticky piston facing towards the back with a block on its face. Then we put block here, a repeater facing into it, and then a block behind it to turn on the repeater. This can also be a redstone torch, but I just use a redstone block. Then we're going to make an L shape of slabs like this. And then these are all going to have redstone dust on top. And then we're going to block these two redstone off so they don't connect. And that's going to make a clock, which we don't want. So we have to put a block here and then a button here to redirect that redstone away from this block. Then we're going to carry this redstone line on for another three blocks and then place a block up at the end three more redstone, and that will extend this half of the ceiling. Next, we need to put a note block here, then a sticky piston facing outwards, and then a redstone block on its face. Then we want to put a support block here, then another block underneath, break this one, then a slab down like this. Then we want two blocks along like this, another one down here, and then this goes down to a slab like this. Then we want to put two normal pistons at the end like this, and then put redstone dust on top of all of these blocks we just placed. Then we come round the back again, put a sticky piston here, redstone block on its face, then a slab here, and dust on top. We use a slab here so that it doesn't power this normal piston or this sticky piston. Then we put obsidian behind it so that it doesn't get pushed by the opposite piston. We could use a hopper here instead of a slab, but it's just cheaper this way. Then we want to squeeze in here, come underneath this obsidian, put a sticky piston facing downwards, then a block on its face. Then on top of this furnace, we hold crouch and then put a comparator facing inwards. Then we put a furnace behind it and then put any item inside it. It won't turn on because it's being locked by that redstone block, but this isn't a problem. As soon as this extends, the comparator will turn on. Okay, that was a lot of steps to follow, but we can go through it again. So two support blocks here, slab, Break these, dust here, piston, block facing backwards, then block here, repeater, redstone block or torch behind it, then we put an L shape of slabs like this, redstone dust on top, and then block this off, then it starts clocking, so we want to put block here and then a button to redirect the redstone away from that block. Then we extend this line three blocks along, then put a block here, and then put redstone dust on all of it to extend the rest of our ceiling. Then we go underneath this piston, a note block here, sticky piston facing out, redstone block here, then two blocks down, break this one, and then a slab here, come around the front, two blocks like this, then go one down, then a slab here like this, then normal pistons in front like that, and then dust on top of all of this. Then we put a sticky piston on this redstone, then redstone block in front, a slab, redstone dust, and then an obsidian behind it. And finally, we squeeze in here again, put a sticky piston on the bottom of that obsidian, then a block on its face, then hold crouch on this furnace, put a comparator down, then a furnace behind it, and then one of any item inside it. 
I forgot to add one thing. We need to put a note block here, then a regular block on top to mute the note block, and then repeat on the other side. Now we can test the door to see if it works. So break this block, put a lever, so it closes, and it opens. So now we can go and add in the rest of our blocks. So we just put blocks all along here to fill in the floor. Do the same on the other side, like this. And then we do the same for the ceiling go around the back and do this as well. And now the door is fully sealed up. So the door's done, but it doesn't have an input yet. So if you want to make an input like the one I have here, then I'll show you how to do that now. First, we need to extend the floor out a little bit on both sides. And then we put our pressure plates down like this. Starting from the front with this line of slabs, we go underneath the pressure plates, put a note block on the right, and then a sticky piston on the left. And this is going to hold a redstone block, which will then power a line of redstone dust like this. And here we're just making a simple zero tick generator. So we put a sticky piston here, which is going to hold a block. Then underneath that, we're going to put a regular piston and then on the left side of that, we're going to put another sticky piston with a redstone block. And here you can see how bed works. So this sticky piston is directly powered. Then this one is getting bud powered. And then this one is getting updated and bud powered by this piston here. So when these retract, it's going to give us a nice usable zero tick pulse for our input. So now we just put a block here, redstone dust here, then two more blocks like this, two more redstone dust, and that's our input done for this side. So if we just go on it, stand on the pressure plate, the door closes and opens. For the back, we need to do things a bit differently. So first of all, we need to break these blocks and then replace them with redstone. Then we start things off normal, we put a note block here, and then a sticky piston here. But instead we put a target block here, not a redstone block. And you'll see why in a second. So we put a block here, comparator, then a furnace here, and then we're going to put a wooden shovel inside, because it's a non-stackable item, so it counts as a full stack, and it will give us better signal strength. Then we want to put two blocks here, redstone dust on top, and you can see this target block is redirecting the redstone away from this block so it doesn't interfere with that piston. Then we go underneath, we put a sticky piston here, normal piston here, and then another sticky piston here like this. So we're doing the zero tick generator again, but underneath because we have to go underneath the door. And you can see if this were a redstone block, then when it pushes down, it would bud power this piston and it wouldn't work. So then we put a normal block here, redstone block here, then block underneath, redstone dust, then we make a redstone line going along like this. Then we go up one block here, break this block and this one, and then one more block like this, and then we put redstone on top of all of this. And now we can test this side, closes, and it opens. And there you have it. You've made yourself a very nice 4x4 piston door. This video took a very long time to make, so a like and sub would be greatly appreciated. I know I don't upload that much anymore, but hopefully I'll have more stuff soon. You know, soon. <laughs>